Welcome back to Story Hustler, Murder, Mayhem, PTSD. I'm Dylan. And I'm Mike. And we are very excited to have a very special guest with us this evening. Uh, it's a woman I've gotten to know over the last several weeks. Her name is Elizabeth Roundy. Elizabeth, great to see you and finally talk face to face, sort of. And uh, we really appreciate you making some time for us today. Thank you, Mike. Okay, uh, listen, we'll just we'll dive right into it. Elizabeth is joining us from her uh, her home area uh, in Idaho, Jefferson County, and uh, some extraordinary things have gone on in your life. And you described it. You have described it as a very sad situation. Just let's get into it. Uh, why is it? What has happened in your life and the life of your family that leads us to this point? Well. So three years ago, I left the SLDS church. And for the last three years, I've been in court fighting for my children. I have full custody of them since December of 2021. I was given full custody of them. Um, their father's still fighting for them. On the first day of this year, on New Year's Day, early in the morning, my 16-year-old daughter took my car and ran away and disappeared, and I have not had any contact or been able to find her since. And I believe there are people in the SLDS that are hiding her from me. You know, this is this is what I want to dive into. and. It, so folks know, just this month, the first day of January, the first day of the year, your daughter and you had fought to get your children. You left the FLDS church and you'd fought to get your children out. You have a vulnerable 16-year-old daughter. She took your car, basically stole your car, and, uh, and took off. And then some time, short time after, they found the car and a letter saying that she was going to... And, and now, but she's vanished. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah and, yes. and, and you, you, uh, you alluded to the, that she didn't do this alone. No. And that's what I want to get into. Your daughter, you got out of the FLDS church and you wanted to get your children out. Yes? Yes, definitely. And, and why is that? And what were you hoping for? Uh, and, uh, and what, and what has happened? Well, it, it, um, when I was a part of the church, I we were kept in the darkness. We were told only the things they wanted us to hear. They told us not to watch TV, not to watch the news, not to read papers. We weren't to get on the internet. We were completely kept secluded so that all we were being told was that what they wanted us to hear. And I was sent away to repent in 2014 and separated from my children at that time. And sent away. And so when people understand, you basically just got kicked out of town and said, you're not worthy, get out of here. And you get, you have to leave your children behind. Yes. Well, so they didn't tell me to leave my children, but that was the option that all the people knew that if they were sent away, they were, they were, we were taught that the children belonged there and we should leave them there. So, so, so it fits into the thinking, though, but you were raised that when you're, when you're banished sort of like that, you're supposed to leave your children because they belong to the priesthood. Yeah, exactly. Right. So, and you did. You're, and then let's, so people know, you spent, you spent your life in the FLDS church, yes? Yes, it wasn't always called the FLDS church. But, uh, but, in, the, but in the organization that is now known as the you grew up in that. Yes, I, I grew up in Idaho, so we were somewhat secluded from the main group. Down in but Colorado it, City. And my, yes, we were associated with the group. Okay, okay. And, and you, did, you thought you did all the right things. So, but anyhow, you get to the point where you're, you're told to leave the community, and you do. Go to yes. ne Nebraska. Yes, correct. Yeah. But at some point, what, what you changed? You were out for, I mean... A reason that's kind of beyond your control, which it, it, I think should be shed some light on. I mean, you had a miscarriage, which is not anything that you had any control over. And they kicked you out of the church, something that you've been taught to believe your entire life. Because of this one thing, they treated it like it was your fault. And 
I mean, I think we should just point to that fact. I think that's pretty crazy. And, you, you know, you just were vanished. Why, why, yeah. you know, why, explain, why was it that you suddenly fell out of favor? Well, actually, so I was in Nebraska, sent away for five and a half years. And in the time, I, I believe my mind was opened up quite a bit because I'd been away from the main brainwashing. And I just wanted my children back. All I could think about the whole time was, I've got to get back to my children. I don't like being away from them. And so I finally came to the conclusion that what really changed my mind was when I decided that I did not want to get back with my husband I'd been separated from. I realized that he didn't treat me right. I'd been living there in Nebraska, and people had treated me with respect. And they appreciated me for the good that was in me. And I started to see and realize that he had psychologically um, abused me all those years I was with him. And I actually got back around him for a day or so. And I just thought, you know what? I don't have to live this way. I don't like the way he treats me. I don't want to be with him. And that was my breaking point of deciding that I don't care what anybody thinks. I'm going to get my children. <laughs> And so I went back, so that was in 2019. I went back in March of 20 okay. and attempted to get my children, but I could not find them. I knew they lived in Carawan, but I couldn't find, figure out where they lived. The police warned me to not go knock on the door. They couldn't blow up in my face. Um, I've been told several different people that the children will disappear if they know a parent come back to get them. And the police were warning me of that. So I had to go to court and get a court order, child pickup court order to go get them. So it took about another month to, before I could actually go back and get my children. And so, so let's just be clear. You are that you have gone through a whole slew of court proceedings, but you have legal custody of your children, not your ex-husband or your former husband. Uh, you're the person who the courts have recognized has uh, is the, in charge of those kids. Yes. Yes, I have the legal and physical custody of all of my minor children. Elizabeth, just if you would, but uh, what was it? Was it in fact because you had suffered a miscarriage that you were thrown out of the community? Was that your transgression? Yes. I was told to go have an interview with Lyle there, and he asked me if I had had any miscarriages, and I told him I had had two, and told him about them. And he was very blunt and kind of rude. He said, well, what caused those miscarriages? And I told him that the first miscarriage, I actually had a fibroid, which later we had to remove. And the doctor thought that had caused the miscarriage. But the second miscarriage I had, I didn't know the cause of it. But he, um, he was asking some really personal questions, and I... I have had a um, had a relationship with my husband while I was pregnant, and so he told me I needed to go away and repent because I had had that miscarriage and we didn't know the cause of it. But I guess in my mind, I figured he assumed that that was the cause of my miscarriage. How how do you feel about that? And what Lyle did. Lyle seems to be sort of the, the enforcer in so many of these stories. As of yeah, recently. I, you say what? Yeah. As of recently, yeah, since Warren's went away, yeah. So, what do you... Yeah, i just hurt and angry. I mean, it's already heartbreaking and so hard to, to have that experience of losing a baby like that. And then to be sent away to repent and never be invited back because you had a miscarriage. It was really hard, <laughs> you know. I, I kept praying and to repent, and I didn't know how, what more I could do to repent, you know. And it finally came to the point where I I just felt like I had done everything I could. I hadn't been invited back. This was a bunch of nonsense. I wanted my children, so I went back to get them. And and and, and you, this is over the court. You fight. You were away for five years. 
Yeah. From your children. Five, five and a half years. Lyle Dex told me when he sent me away, maybe a couple weeks, maybe a couple months. You'll you'll be invited back. And made me think it wasn't gonna be very long. And you, you have said, I've heard you say before, they did reach out to you on a number of occasions, members of the FLDS community, but it was not to invite you back or to tell you about your kids. Why did they reach out to you when you were basically banished? The only calls that I ever got was from the bishop's office, and they were asking for donations of money. They banished you, and they still wanted your money. Yes, and I had one son with me, so I was a single mom trying to survive. But I did spend everything I could because I was worried about my children at home. And I thought, well, if I'm spending money, hopefully this will go to take care of the children. I don't believe in it, but that, that was my thought process when I spent the money. So I know that you're now, you don't associate with the FLDS faith anymore, but like, how long did it take you to separate from that? You know, like when you were sent away, were you still a believer for a while for those five years or kind of what was like your journey away from it? Because I know you still have faith in God, but. Well, so I to tell you the truth, I was scared to believe anything else because I knew that if I didn't pull the mark and do exactly what they wanted me to do, I may not ever get my children back. So I, I tried to tell the mark and do everything exactly like they wanted so that I could hopefully get invited back and get my children. Um, I never actually really considered myself to not be a member until after I went back to get my children and got treated so badly. And they automatically said I was an apostate, even though I felt like I still believed I just wanted my children. And then I started getting online and watching some videos from other people and the video of Warren Jeff telling people he's the wickedest man on earth and that he didn't pull any authority, he wasn't a prophet. And that really, that was very sobering to me. I realized at that time that I had been deceived all those years. And I, I can say that that was after I tried to get my children, so that would have been in March or April 2020. Yeah, I, uh, I'd like to sort of explore, you know, your, your daughter, you're, you guys uh, are go, you're going through a horrible situation, uh, any mother, I, I think, any person. And this is why I'm sort of glad to share it with my daughter, because it brings it home to me, what would I do if it was my child? Uh, I'd like to think I'm as strong as you are, but uh, your daughter didn't, the, the, we, we focus on you being banished, but while you're being, you're banished, your children are in the care of the, what has come to be known as sort of FLDS caretakers. And you were under the impression, I get, that they were, it was a love, gonna be a loving environment and they were gonna be with people you trusted. But it really seems that the, this is a time when the FLDS community nowadays having thr disrupted so many families, uses it to really indoctrinate. You said, use the word brainwashing, to brainwash your children. And if and when you're strong enough, like you were, and some people we know, Dan and Maxine Jessup, when you're strong enough to do what you folks do and say, hell with this, we're gonna go back and get our kids, you face the real obstacle that you your ch kids have been turned into, weaponized against you, turned yeah. against enemies. Your daughter didn't just take your car and, and leave on New Year's Day. She had to have had help and guidance. What, what's your thoughts? Well, I, I can't say for positive, but it, the feeling I have in my heart is that before I got my children back and gained custody of them, but they had this plan in motion because it's happened so many times in so many situations similar to mine, where the children turn 16, 17, 18, and they disappear. Um, so her father called me and told me she was at his place, that she had taken my car and ran away. And I told him he needed to send her home. And he just laughed out loud and said she is home and told me he would not send her back. This is your, this is her father, your and ex. And he was in on this. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but so, 
And and uh, you know, having having now heard your heartbreaking case and the story of Dan and Maxine, you know, uh, uh, is law enforcement first of all is law enforcement taking your case seriously? And do you think that they're doing what they can to help you find your daughter? I, I believe they're making an effort to to find her. Yes. And the main main agency is the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office, and you're in community. Yes, of course, it's always frustrating and feels like it's not happening as fast as it should, but I do really feel like they are trying and they, they're making a good effort. So. But it and I guess we should point to why this is such a troubling issue. I mean, a girl running away from home is obviously a troubling story just on its own, but what makes this more troubling is the fact that Warren Jeffs has now called for marriages and, you know, the usual to now proceed again, even though there was a hiatus. And so they're going to start possibly marrying off these young girls, which is what's the most frightening thing is that if she is, you know, married off to someone else, like you may never see her again. And she's 16 married to a 65 year old with four kids within the next few years. Like, you know, I mean, she ran away and that's troubling in itself, but yeah, the fact that these are going to start back up and she's now being indoctrinated back into believing that that's okay. I mean, it's like a human sex trafficking ring and it really is. They're, you know, pulling all these kids back in and it's modern day sex trafficking and it's frightening because like you mentioned, Dan and Maxine, this happened to them a few months ago. This is not an isolated incident. They're tearing families apart. They're pulling people back in. They're isolating people like you and getting rid of people who are standing in the way of that. And it's very troubling. Yes, I totally agree. And that, that has been my main concern since she disappeared. And even before, I tried talking to her about it. I tried explaining to her that there was a lot of bad things happening that I didn't, I was trying to protect her. But she had, she was being, she'd been so turned against me that she didn't want to listen to me. When you and did have her back, did like how was that relationship? Was it you know getting better? Like before she ran away, like did you have any inclination that she would try to pull something like this, or like what was that relationship like when you had her? No, she she we got along fine in my estimation. Um, I could tell she was always reserved. She she would be obedient. She was. Doing really good in school. I was really proud of her. I tell her how proud of her I was. Um, as for her letting me get close to her, she was very reserved and she was she wouldn't let me get very close to her, which is understandable. She's been through so much her whole life. It breaks my heart to even think about. Anyway, but she, as far as I could tell, she was doing just fine. I, it totally shocked when she ran away. I was not expecting it because. I had put a lot of trust in her and so I'd let her drive my car several times, let her do things, but and she'd been trustworthy up to that point. Otherwise, I would have hid my keys and wouldn't have made them available for her to take the car. Yeah. Your uh, your uh, ex husband, Nephi, uh, he has been checked out and he's, uh, I'm assuming the law enforcement have checked him out and he they, he's not harboring your daughter. They told me they checked at his house more than once and they had not found her there. Yeah. What are your suspicions? Where do you think she might be? Well, I, I don't know. They're positive. Um, right. I think that she's probably with relatives of Nephi and that they're hiding her. And um, I think her father doesn't know where they, where she is, but he's saying she doesn't. Right. Um, I just what one of my big worries too about the whole situation is that when my children have been since since I went back and got them, and when they've been in the care of the SLBS, they have turned them very bitter towards me. When I when I when I was supposed to be on visitation, when I got them back and got custody of them, then they were very, very disrespectful, very hateful towards me. They wouldn't hardly respond to anything. And it's been a battle 
to try and win their love. Are they? Bra- I, do you think they're brainwashed? Do you think those during the five years that you uh, they you were away, that uh, I mean they caught they clearly bad mouthed you. It sounds like. Oh, definitely. I, I was told by some of their neighbors when I went to get them that they had overheard in more than one instance, several times they had overheard the caretakers telling the children that I was wicked and I was a bad person. They're wicked. They love to throw the word wicked around for real bad people, don't they? I've been, yeah. They've called me wicked on a couple of occasions, I'll tell you that. Well, that would uh, be good. Yeah, that's probably true. Um, uh, yeah, uh, well, uh, as, yeah, as my old friend Flora Jessup one time said, she says, you're right, we are wicked, but we're not as wicked as them. So... Uh, <laughs> That's, I thought that was funny. Uh, Elizabeth, uh, where do you go? What's, uh, what, how do you proceed? You, you have five kids. Who, how many are still with you? I have three of them with me right now. My oldest son, Jonathan, was 18 when I went back to get my children. So he's so independent. He chose to stay there with the religion. And okay. he, won't, he won't talk to me much. It breaks my heart, but he. They're taught to not have communication with anybody they think to be an apostate. And he's convinced I'm, a, I'm an apostate, so he doesn't want to talk to me. Which I've tried to get him to come talk to me and hear my side of what's going on, and he, he doesn't want anything to do with me, so I can't get him to listen to me. So then, part. Is, is, is that the, the oldest son, and then and is that Elentra next? And we should say your daughter... Ellie, 16 year old, uh, we haven't even identified her. Elentra is the girl who is missing and being sought by law enforcement. Yes, her name is Elentra Fisher. Okay. And she's my third child. Third child. Uh, I had Jonathan and then Benjamin and then Elentra. Okay, and then the two youngest? Would be Rachel Fisher and Alan Fisher. Okay, how are those kids doing? Well, you know, they, they seem pretty content most of the time, yeah. but they still give me an attitude sometimes about quite disrespectful sometimes. And usually when that happens, they say things from, that I know that they've been in contact with somebody in SLDS. Um, they, they tell me things that I know they, could have, they couldn't have found out anywhere else. Right. So I know that somebody's continuing to contact them behind my back and try and keep them hating me and it's, it's a really difficult situation, yeah. but I consistently try to just show them how much I love them and pray that they'll come along. What a what a, a terrible burden for you to have to shoulder, and and it just you know, I think that one of the things that uh, we've heard cases about these young girls now vanishing or disappearing or going being pulled back into the FLDS community after great effort has been made to get them out. Uh, we're aware of Warren Jeffs issuing a revelation saying that his community is going to start marriages again, plural marriages. Uh, that doesn't, that, you know, that is not just one girl disappearing. That takes a network of people sort of executing the crimin, what I see as the criminality of Warren Jeffs in this community. And Dylan mentioned, you know, trafficking. I know they they're sweet, you know, they come off as sweet people, and they're just doing their thing. But if they're harboring children, do you think that uh, that sex trafficking is too? Because that's what's going to happen to these young girls that get pulled back in. They're going to be placed in plural marriages. I I believe it's the exact same thing because Tiedemann also, well, Tiedemann Jeff, he's kind of taken over for Warren. Right. He, He's been giving the people revelations, and one of them is telling the people to gather up all the young daughters and take them to caretakers to be taught and prepared for marriage. And that that's what's so concerning to me about my daughter's disappearance as soon as she turned 16, that she just disappeared. And it, it's very frightening to me to think about what's going to happen to her if I'm not able to protect her what will ha- you know you bit you grew up in this community in this society what will happen to her what's what's sort of the inevitable well 
I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I just know that I have heard, you know, back when I was younger, things weren't like they are now. The things were done more, I guess you could say more in the open and more honestly. But, but nowadays with Warren and Hilleman taking over, there's so many things happening where they're actually telling young girls to go to certain compounds or certain places. And I, I, I've heard a lot of terrible things. I, I don't know. <laughs> You know, I, I've never talked to anybody personally that's happened to, but I've heard a lot of terrible things that have happened. Right. Um, if uh, if you could have a moment with your daughter right now, what would you say? What would you say to Ellie? Ellie. Well, I would tell her that I I'm missing her and I love her very much, and that I want her to know that. I want her to come home and I want her to know that she's always welcome at my home and that my whole desire is just for her well-being and her welfare, to, to protect her and help her, to have a protected, decent life. It's just awful. They think that they're, you know, doing the Lord's work, but I just, I don't know what Lord wants their children stripped away from their parents and given to men who are just sex crazed lunatics that want all the power and all the money and all the young women. I just, I don't understand. Any, uh, any input, uh, Elizabeth, what's your reaction? We've been covering this from the sort of the criminal angle for so long that it seems like you just in, in many ways, uh, the, it had, I, and I'm sure law enforcement may have thought about this, but it sounds to me like one crime is, is you know, spirit in, in, in violating a parent's rights. There's a crime that, crime that has been committed in connection with your daughter, but it represents a whole network of people that are committing serial, similar crimes and then, and then, you know, acting as safe houses or caretakers. And, and yeah, yeah, it just, you wonder... You wonder at putting the connecting the dots for law enforcement because it sounds like the the hardcore FLDS community has now just become all the you know all the homes potentially you know homes for sex trafficking if they're if they're shuffling kids uh, in and out of there especially young women. What's your what's your read on that, Elizabeth? Yes, that's definitely been one of my concerns because I, I realize that that that's more or less what it is, when they're taking young children away from their parents and doing whatever with them, it's nothing different than human trafficking. And it's, it's wrong. It's yeah. totally illegal and it's not okay. What would you say to, if you ever had a chance to say anything to Warren, what would you say to Uncle Warren at this point? Or do you even want to take that on? I don't think I would even want to talk to him. But if I was to say anything to him, <laughs> I, I would probably, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to talk to him, but I would probably tell him that he, he hurt us. He hurt a lot of people. And I don't think that that's going to go, I mean, I, I think that's something that he's going to have to account for someday. You know, and in many ways that you just sort of crystallized it. This guy's supposed to be leading people and looking over the course of his leadership in the FLDS church, he's done nothing but hurt people. The people who are the most faithful, tearing pa families apart, taking kids away, exiling husbands and wives and, you know, fathers and mothers and just ter basically tearing the familial structure of that community down so he, he's in control of all the children and keeps everybody off balance and in a, a state of fear and it's just the cruelty that's what strikes me uh, talking to you know just seeing what you've gone through and talk to some other people just the cruelty that he has inflicted on the people who are really the most devoted well i know when i was there i <laughs> i put my all into it and i I do feel like I got 
the bad end of the stick for how how faithful I was striving to be, you know. But that's the most hurtful thing to me through the whole experience of it is seeing what my children were put through. And that's my biggest regret right there is not waking up sooner to try and help my children because it, it, they've just been through <laughs> so much that it's just heartbreaking to even think about it. But I think it's terrible for, you know, parents who have gone through this. I mean, they sit there and they blame themselves and they think what would have, should have, could have. But you were, you know, raised in this religion thinking that, like, you're going to heaven if you follow these rules and, like, you're protecting your children and you're isolated from the world. Like you said, no TV, no Internet, no newspapers. Like, it's, yeah, and it's just you don't know anything other than that. And that's such a scary thought when you look back at it and you're like on the outside and looking in and I just think that's I mean for parents you know they put their kids through that but it's like they were put through that as children too it's an endless cycle of abuse and I know that it's gotten worse in the more recent years but even still like it's always instilled this isolation this othering it's always othering people and making everyone from the outside world seem so awful if you don't agree with them Yes, that that is one doctrine that I knew better. So, and you know, I I grew up here in Idaho. We went to the public schools, children. I knew there were so many good people in the world. And when I would hear Warren get up or Lyle get get up and say we're the best people on the earth, we're God's chosen people. Nobody else is going to be saved, etc. I I never did agree with that. I just thought, how could that be? Because I know there's so many good people in the world that that that, that just doesn't make any sense. I, I, I know that it's hard for uh, people to appreciate how much courage it takes for somebody like you, who, is, who comes from your background, to, to get to the point where you are. And I don't think people appreciate what, a, what an excruciating and really, really gut-wrenching experience i think i'm assuming it's all the people that i know who have made the break and got a it was hard it was not easy and uh, and uh, you're a very courageous person for just first making that step i know you were motivated by your children which is understandable but it's just it's it's a big hard courageous step yeah it's definitely definitely not easy to go against all these people that you once thought were your friends and the most wonderful people on the earth, you know, and it, it, it's not easy, but I, I do have my family here backing me up and I'm so grateful for that. You have a support, you have a support network in Idaho. Yes, I, I moved back home with my family where I grew up and they have been they have been ostracized. They haven't had anything to do with the FLBS church to speak of since nineteen ninety nine. So Wow, yeah. So they've been away from it for a while and and I'm really grateful to be back home. They've been very supportive. So well, That's you're uh, you're uh, you're our new hero and we're uh, we're rooting for you and your daughter. Dill, what else what do you got to throw in here? Yeah, we're hoping that this, you know, brings some light to the story and can help you in any way, shape, or form. And we're our thoughts and prayers are with you a hundred percent. And really thank can... you so much for talking to us. Yeah. I appreciate the opportunity to to be able to get my story out there. Um I'm very concerned about my daughter. I, I miss her, I want her back. <laughs> and I know it's they're they're very deceitful and very good at hiding these children. I, I realize there's parents, but some of them have been missing their children for years and don't know where they are. And it breaks my heart <laughs> to think about it. And I'm just praying that we'll be able to find the answer and get her back and that I can know she's safe. Well, please keep us up to date on anything. And if there's anything else that we can do, we're more than happy to help. 
Right. We're, we're hoping that, you know, I, I know that you, you did a great interview, and I want to give the guy credit. The uh, young man interviewed you for the Eastern Idaho News Service. It's a terrific interview, and you go into much of your backstory. But it's, it's, it's been my experience. It's, it really takes a local reporter or a reporter to get on one of these stories and make it, you know, make a big deal, help you put, help you push the message. So in any way we can do to either, you know, help uh, f get the word out about your daughter or help you, you know, just rebuild your life, which you're doing obviously a, a great job at. But it's tough having gone through what you've gone through. Yes, I'm, I'm grateful to be on this side of it, I guess. That's what I can say. Are you? I appreciate all the support. Thank you. Do you, you feel you do you feel better a lot? what what is the feeling having sort of you still got to fighting for your kids you still sort of got to deal with all this nonsense but is there is there some feeling in your soul your spirit uh, that's different yeah i mean so one of the biggest things i noticed was before i got married you know when i lived here in idaho we we could think or say whatever we thought or whatever we wanted and it didn't insult anybody my family was very free and open and we could you know if we, if we had different opinions we could discuss uh and tell each other our views and nobody you know insulted or hurt and that's one of the things i noticed once i moved down to utah and became part of the main group was if i voiced my opinion on anything I was shut down really quickly. I was told that I couldn't, basically I was an apostate if I disagreed with anything we heard over the pulpit and church or anything. I was just told I was a terrible person. So I learned real quick that I couldn't even speak my mind or speak, tell, tell anybody how I felt or they would judge me rashly. And my husband at one time even threatened to move me out of the house. Mm. If you're going to talk that way, if you're going to voice your opinions, I'm going to move you somewhere else so you won't influence my other children, et cetera. And I'm just really grateful to not be under that, not having to walk on eggshells all the time, I guess you could say. But I'm really grateful to be able to think for myself and, you know, try to get close to the Lord in the way I rest instead of happened to follow all these strict guidelines of everything they were telling us to do and not to do and it's, it's a big it's a freedom that everybody should enjoy hey. well listen best wishes to you i hope you'll stay in touch with us uh this platform open to you anytime you got something to say because we'd like to hear what you think i appreciate it thank you mike and yes. uh and let's find your daughter Bring uh, you yeah, bring her home. Uh, Ellie, uh, 16, we're going to show her photograph. Anybody with information, call your local law enforcement uh, and uh, specifically the agency handling it. It is the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office up in Rigby, Idaho. So best wishes to you, my dear friend, and we'll talk soon. Thank you very much for spending some time with us. Thank you. Yes, thanks again. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Well, signing off for a nice little wrap-up of season two.